the nation's commercial capital. This is the news at 10, live from Channels Television. Reporting tonight, Ijoma Oyato. Hello and welcome tonight. Council of State ratifies appointment of Inspector General of Police, also calls for patience over Chibok girls. Federal government says Nigeria's economy is stable despite challenges faced by this administration. Silver Church building collapse in quest to continue as Federal High Court Lagos rejects suit to stop sitting. And Ukraine's president orders military reinforcement in key cities to forestall rebel offensive. And on business news tonight, Nigeria's membership in World Federation of Exchanges to give access to more foreign portfolios. Now on sports news, with the crucial 2015 Nations Cup qualifier less than two weeks away, Super Eagles coach Stephen Keshi expresses delight over the performance of his players in the different clubs. Former leaders, General Yakubu Goram, Al Haji Shehu Shagari, Chief Ernest Shonekon, and Chief Olusegun Obasanjo, were former heads of state who rallied around President Goodluck Jonathan today for the National Council of State meeting. During the meeting, the new Inspector General of Police was confirmed, and Nigerians were asked to be patient as efforts are on to free the missing Chibok girls. Our correspondent Chuku Maunakusi reports. It is the highest policy-making body in the country and should parade all past and present leaders who have the country at heart. But at the last count here, only four of them were in attendance in a meeting presided over by President Gulag Jonathan. The first subject matter, as briefed by the Akwaibom State Governor, centered on the confirmation that Nigeria is now Ebola-free. The council also uh, advised that Nigerians should not rest on their hours. They should continue to be vigilant and then the borders should be well monitored uh, to ensure that we do not have a second soya visiting Nigeria. Council reviewed the report by the committee set up to investigate reports of discrimination across the states and mandated the committee to beef up the recommendations of sanctions against anyone that is working against the unity of the country in any guise. And on the update on the Chibok girls. Discussions are ongoing. Uh, what was uh, what came out from the National Security Advisor's briefing was the fact that the president will do everything possible to ensure the release of the, those young girls and to ensure the protection of lives and properties. The major players in the National Council of State took their leave one after the other while the Police Service Council reconvened to confirm the appointment of Mr. Suleiman Abba as the Inspector General of Police. The council was unanimous that the active IG be confirmed as a substantive IG and it was, uh, the president was accordingly advised and uh, the president accepted the advice and appointed uh, Malam Abba as the substantive IG of police. We also recognize that police alone won't be able to secure lives and property. They will need the cooperation and collaboration of every Nigeria. When it comes to issues of security, all of us should be seen as activists. The council was said to have agreed that 1% of the federal allocation accruing to the states should be set aside for the funding of the Nigeria police to equip them for the discharge of their duties, which includes the protection of lives and property of Nigerians. Chukuma Onopsi, Channel's Television News. Now, following his confirmation by the National Council of State, the Inspector General of Police says he'll work to meet up with the expectations of others. Mr. Suleiman Abba was reacting to questions from State House correspondents immediately after his confirmation. He pledged to ensure efficient management of the resources available to carry out his job. I must tell you, it is uh, a happy moment, but it is also a moment of uh, sober reflection. 
reflection on the responsibilities, reflection on the expectations. Um, certainly, I have to work hard to ensure that um, I meet up to the expectations of the office. Truly, Nigerians, and in fact, all people in Nigeria deserve the best from us so that we make the environment safer and secured. I assure you, having reflected on all this, we will ensure that we manage all the resources in the charge of the Nigeria police to ensure that they are used judiciously for the safety and security of the people in Nigeria. Inspector General of Police there, Mr. Suleiman Aba. In the meantime, fierce fighting is going on in Ashaka Town in Gombe State, where the Army and the Nigerian Air Force are battling hard to repel the Boko Haram insurgents who are reported to have overrun Ashaka Town. The cement factory is said to have been taken over, and the police station in Ashaka is believed to have been torched by the terrorists. When contacted, the military says it's expanding its scope of operation in the area, and the Air Force is shelling the town in a bid to flush out the rampaging terrorists. Ashaka is in the Fada local government area of Gombe State, with the cement factory as one of its major landmarks. There are fears that the terrorists may stretch into neighboring towns, but the military has given the assurance that no inch of the nation's territory will be ceded to the insurgents. On Sunday, the terrorists also attacked Mubi in Adamawa State. They are said to have mounted roadblocks in strategic locations, extorting money from residents. Meanwhile, the Chief of Defense Staff, Air Marshal Alex Bade, has been reacting to reports that Boko Haram militants attacked his hometown, that's Mubi, in Adamawa State. Air Marshal Abade, who was at the National Council of State meeting with other security chiefs, told State House correspondents that an attack on his village does not mean that the military is helpless, as is being insinuated in some quarters. According to him, the attack could have been on any part of Nigeria. How can Nigeria be helpless? No, that's a, that, that's a no. That, that is a territory. It's own home base. If you, 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 you listen, 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 listen. If CDF loses his hometown, it's the same thing as losing Lagos. It's the same thing as losing Enugu. Any part of Nigeria that is lost, CDF carries the weight. Okay, so you see my theory, whether it's my hometown, whether it's my house that is burnt, or a maker's house, or whoever's house uh, burnt in Nigeria, the, the, the CDF is pained. Let's take a break from looking at security matters. It's been a steady stream of information on the performance of the various sectors under President Goodluck Jonathan's administration. One after the other, the ministers and other key officials listed the gains made by this government in the areas of economy, industrialization, and infrastructure development. The four-day event, with its theme, the Jonathan administration for impactful years, features the Minister of Works, Mike Onolomeme, Trade and Investment, Olusegun Aganga, and the Coordinating Minister of the Economy, Dr. Ngozi Okonjo Iwala. Our correspondent, Larry Lassisi, reports. Thank you very much. Honorable Ministers, this is the fourth and final day of this forum, which is meant to highlight the tangible achievements of the Jonathan administration over the past four years. Achievements that are said to have been attained despite unprecedented internal is, uh, security challenges. Very unfortunate. Three ministers were on hand to point out these achievements in the sectors they manage. The Minister of Works set the ball rolling with an abundance of slides to drive home the achievements of this administration, especially in the road sector. No administration, pre-colonial, colonial, or uh, in the past 15 years, have made the kind of giant steps that the administration of President Bullock and Billy Jonathan has recorded in the road sector. As at 2011, we have a little over 4,000 kilometers of road that you could describe as being in fair condition. But three years on, today we have about 25,000 kilometers of federal road in fair condition. 
he was immediately followed by the Minister of Industry, Trade and Investment, Olusha Mwaganga. He said credit must be given to President Jonathan for the remarkable achievement his ministry has attained, especially in the industrial sector. You can see this is one of the fastest success any country has had in automobile. Over 22 companies have signed commitments with technical partners to produce assembled cars in Nigeria. You, you can see the likes of Peugeot, the likes of Honda, the likes of Nissan. Our own dear innocent in Norway has signed an agreement with two Jap Chinese firms that are working with him before the end of this month. I think around the 20 something, I'll be launching these new cars in Norway. So, again, comparing 2011 to 2014, where were we and where are we today? Is President Goodluck Good Jonathan actually working? Are his ministers working? Here's the answer again. Did we have a, sugar, uh, a national sugar plan in 2011? No. Now we do. The number of jobs in the sugar industry then, 3,850. Today, we're looking at 180,000 plus. Investment in sugar cane, of course, was about 100 million then. Now we're talking about $3.2 billion. It wasn't time for the coordinating Minister of the Economy and the Minister of Finance to take to the podium. She tied together the contributions of her fellow ministers and how their work has positively impacted on the Nigerian economy. All these despite very clear challenges. Yes, we face challenges in the economy, the challenges of unemployment, the challenges of exclusion, the challenges of job creation. But the point we want to make is that for the past three to four years, what you have heard from my colleagues, colleagues today show that this administration under the president is facing up to those challenges and is trying to tackle them one by one. And if we remain resolute, we will be able to finish tackling all these challenges from security to creation of employment to running the economy to making sure that every Nigerian is able to say, yes, I can stand on my own two feet. As this forum ends, the message is clear. This administration under President Goodluck Jonathan has done a lot and it has tangible achievements to its credit. Achievements which it believes will convince those who believe otherwise. Lanre Lassese, God bless channels and television news. In part two, after the break, Kwara Governor gets endorsements for second term, promises the people a better deal. That's in a moment. Do join us again. <laughs>